Good morning. The Committee of the Whole is called to order. Being that we don't have a quorum, we will stay on recess, but I will invite the, uh, the panel that are outside uh, to come on in. We have, uh, I'd like to thank my colleagues that are here today. We have the speaker, uh, ter uh, Speaker Terai and Vice Speaker Tina Munoz Barnes. We also have my Vice Chair, uh, Senator Tello Tadigui, Senator Jesse Duan, and Senator uh, Fisher here. Once we reach a quorum, then we will commence in the committee hall. At this point, at this time, we'll now stay at recess. Stand at recess. Thank you.
The committee hall is called to order. We do have a quorum. Materials for the committee of the whole are in shared session Google Drive fo folder labeled Committee of the Whole Bill 114 37LS. Proposed amendments must be submitted in writing to the clerk via email session drive at guamlegislature.org. Amendments not in writing will be called out of order. Rules of engagement. We have three rounds for discussion. We will have two rounds of questions for the panel. With each center allotted five minutes, not for questions not including your response. So the clock stops after you ask the question. But if you continue talking, the clock will continue. Keep, it, keep that in mind, my colleagues. Time to speak may not be yielded from more than one member to another. A member will use the member's time on a question, use all the member's time on that question, and may not later speak, even if all the time yielded was not used. That's found in section 1.02D3. At the completion of the two rounds of questions, panelists will be excused. Third round is for amendments or comments to speak on the bill. Questions should be shall be confined to the substance or nature of the bill, which specifically is Bill 114. Personal inference as to the character or the motive of any senator or any individual testifying is not permitted. Any violation of the general rule of conduct will be called out of order and may result in removal from the whole. Proper form and quorum shall be practiced by all Present. Individuals who fail to maintain proper form and quorum will be restricted from participating and will be removed from the, from the hall. After complete discussion of the bill, I will allow the sponsor to close and will entertain a motion for the recommendation of the Committee of the Whole, followed by a motion to rise from the Committee of the Whole, at which time I will report out the bill as recommended by the Committee of the Whole. I thank you, and at this time I'd ask the, the panel present to please rise, and you'll be sworn in by the Executive Director, uh, Mr. Sanongstein. Hafadi, good morning, panel. Please raise your right hand. Do you affirm that any and all information that you provide today under the penalty of perjury be the truth, or in writing, written, or verbally, be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Do you affirm? Mr. Chair, they are sworn in. Thank you, Executive Director. At this time, I'd ask the panel, and I'll begin with my right, which is your left, to my colleagues, to please introduce yourself, and then we'll proceed on. Good morning, my name is Lillian Paris Kosaka. I'm with the Guam Office of Veterans Affairs. I'm the Special Projects Coordinator. My name is Jules, my name is Joe Menno, Guahu Pagui Actu Director of the Office of Suntun Veterano. Good morning, Senators. Llewellyn Terlahi, Chief Fiscal Analyst from Office of Finance and Budget. Good morning, Jason Baza. Budget and Management Analyst Supervisor, BBMR. Thank you, panelists. I will begin with first having the author of the Bill 114 to please introduce her bill and speak on it. And then we'll begin our rounds of questions, if needed. Madam Speaker. Mr. Chair, and thank you for those who are here today. I know you've been here for a while. And uh, thank you for BBMR for attending this morning. <clears throat> bill 114 as amended by the Committee on General Government Operations and Appropriations is an act to appropriate $50,000 to the Guam Office of Veterans Affairs relative to funding the April 2024 Island-Wide Veterans Convention. This bill was originally for $40,000 for a convention that was supposed to take place in November 2023. The bill was introduced on May 10th, 2023 because at that time, the veterans did not receive any funding for their convention that they were hoping to have. And so this bill came at the request. Madam Speaker, are, are, you, gonna, are you identifying this bill as a substitute? And the reason why, because it's got to be adopted. If, if you could please move. Yes. So we can move on that motion. Sure. Uh, like I, I'd like to move to adopt the substitute on the floor version of the bill. It just changes the funding source from general fund to general fund in excess of the adopted levels. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Are there any objections to the introduction of the substitute? There being none, so order. Please continue, Madam Speaker. This is Masi, if you don't mind, can I begin again? Just brief, okay, yeah, I just wonder, so this bill 
uh, originally was to appropriate $40,000 to the Office of Veterans Affairs for a convention that was to be held in November 2023. The bill was introduced in May 2023 at the request of Colonel Nick Francisco, the president of the Vietnam Veterans of America, Chapter 668, and, and the commander of the Military Order of the Purple Heart, and also at the request of the director of the Guam Office of Veterans Affairs, Jose A. San Augustine. At that time, they had not received funds necessary for the convention. And as you know, colleagues, I very rarely introduce these kinds of bills to appropriate funding to nonprofit organizations, but this was a convention that was very uh, needed. Uh, they're trying to really reach out to all of the veterans on Guam. This was an, supposed to be an island-wide convention for all of the veterans and to ensure that we bridge all the gaps uh, of information and resources and support to our veterans. They wanted to share concerns and issues that are impacting them. And the funding for the bill is to come from uh, excess funds. The bill was amended in committee from 40 to 50,000 by the Committee on Appropriations. BBMR estimated that the venue cost alone would be at least $31,800 and 8,200 in supplies for a one day conference. At the hearing, they've testified that they are looking to do a second day of conference as well or convention for uh, spouses. We received this morning, and I'm gonna just address it right away. We received this morning a letter from BBMR uh, in support of the bill, but asking us to note, however, that the governor had just delivered $100,000 for the island-wide veterans convention from the American Rescue Plan funds to the Guam Veteran Office of Veterans Affairs. This is news to us, and I'm surprised because they had been asking for this money since uh, May 2023, and they had only been asking for 40000 at the time, increased to 50000 And um, so while I'm glad that the governor has seen fit to deliver money to them, I... Uh, I guess she doesn't want us to put any money towards this convention. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure what is the motivation behind all that, but um, I guess uh, I just want to lay this out. I would like to have a full discussion on the bill, nevertheless, and see if we can flesh out some of these things, Mr. Chair. And I want to thank my colleagues for their support of this bill, for their attendance at the public hearing. I want to thank those veterans who showed up at our public hearing. There were very many of them, they were the leaders of different veterans organizations on Guam, and they were all there in support of the bill. Uh, Mr. Nick Francisco testified, the Office of Veterans Affairs testified for the need for the money, and uh, they were very sincere in their uh, efforts to support the veterans of Guam. So thank you to my colleagues. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I will begin the first round with Senator St. Nicholas. Mr. Chair, if I may, on a point of information or a point of inquiry, please. Ma Madam Vice Speaker, yes, ma'am. Yeah, um, um, the good uh, speaker, retiring speaker, spoke about receiving a letter just today, and I was hoping that we could at least uh, be availed to that piece of uh, information that was provided and maybe even appended. I, I don't, she just said she got a letter or information. Was it in letter form or? And can we get well, a copy for well, well, a moment? Uh, as a matter of fact, I have my staff passing out now copies of the, uh, the letter from BBMR. Mr. Chair, if I could okay. read it. Okay, Into please do. Right. Yeah, so this was from BBMR to the Honorable Joe S. San Augustine, Chairman, Committee on Appropriations. A written testimony for Committee of the Whole on Bills 107 and 114. The Bureau submits written testimony for the following and lists the titles of the bills. Per the January 2024 Consolidated Revenue and Expenditure Report, the General Fund is currently tracking an unobligated FY 2024 balance of 17,358,900. Therefore, should it be the will of the body to move forward 
With passage of these measures, the Bureau notes that the current unobligated FY24 general fund revenue balance will be sufficient to cover the appropriations set forth in both Bill 107 as amended and Bill 117 as amended. It should be noted that the governor recently authorized allocations from the American Rescue Plan funds to the Guam Housing Corporation, $500,000 for the First Time Homeowners Program, and to the Guam Office of Veterans Affairs, $100,000 for the Island-Wide Veterans Convention, as well as an Island-Wide Women Vet Veterans Convention. Please accept this written testimony in lieu of the Bureau's attendance, as I am currently off-island and my staff is entrenched with reconciling appropriation accounts as part of the transition from the AS400 to the new financial management information system. Sincerementi, Lester Carlson. Madam, That's Madam, dated February 21, 2020. Madam Vice, does that suffice? I, I just want to make sure, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, that we have copies of this so that we can look at it thoroughly because as noted by the last paragraph from Mr. Carlson, it notes that the two bills that we're talking about, she's authorizing funding from that, and that's a completely different source. So, and I respect that the, the author of this, leg, this legislation, and if I'm not mistaken, you're on the next one that, or, or um, she's on the next one, that if money's there, uh, how sure of it that these agencies will be receiving that sooner than later, and that it would be JV'd into the accounts, because I want to make sure that these programs are given its resources. So that's the only reason why I asked the point of increase, sir. That being stated, Madam Vice, I'm going to ask then the panel to speak, the veterans folks to speak on it before I ask the first uh, of my colleagues to speak so that we can end that, that, that discussion pretty much. And then we can measure where we want to go from there. Do we want to continue the discussion once they present it? Where, where they stand, because I think it, this is also news to them, to everyone here, pretty much. And so I'll begin with uh, the panel on my right from the veterans. Sir. Manana Sizus, Sizus Masi, Talus Senators. Ane manao yonesi kata, hutungu i todu i minaket setsu i betturano siya, ki mapus na is the informational hearing, no? The in na in donklo na si Jesus masip petore di betturano siya ni man matu za matestigo po esti na na bio. Ah, po esti na kata anay hu tatay tay kumu sigun na hanai magahaga esti na na salapi para esti dos na pa i convention i betturano zan kontoro para i women spouses retreat. Uh, Sigun nahung na salapini para u kinat gesti dos na na programa. Pues para guahu kumentuso zani i zoku team za kumon esti na na salapi na sinangan na manmana ihit or para u manmana ihit. Pues nahung para u kinat gesti dos na programa. I don't know if your program coordinator wants to speak to that. Um, are you comfortable with that statement? Okay. Um, anyone else on the panel would like to speak to this? Because I know that Jason's basically going to read the same letter that was presented to everyone. Madam Speaker, you, would you like to ask questions for them? Maybe we'll just begin with you then, and then, then we'll go around. Thank you. Madam Speaker. This is my see, Mr. Chair. Pues, nayon recibi esti nakata. Uh, Paul Gua, Madam Speaker. Gua <laughs> Lokwi. Okay. So you just received this letter, same time. Well, I showed you the letter and said, what does this mean? And so um, have you received the money? Is the money in your account, the ARP money from the governor, the hundred thousand dollars? And when was it received, Madam Speaker? I would, I would have to um, uh, follow up on that, as the uh, AS four hundred has been disabled. It's been disabled for quite some time, so we don't have any access to our accounts at the moment. 
So is BBMR able to answer that? Yeah, the transfer was made before the AS400 went down on February 2nd. So uh, it was the week at the week before February 2nd. The transfer was made. Correct. And is this an allowable use of ARBP funds? It can fall under um, the revenue loss category for operations. It's allowable through that portion of the eligible uses. All right. Um, I forgot to mention one other person who came to testify, and that was the governor's liaison uh, for Veterans Affairs, Mr. Joseph Mos Moffness, and I wanted to thank him as well for his testimony in support of the bill, saying it was a one of a kind and asking for support. And the hearing on this bill took place on February 5th. When did you say that transfer was made? It was before the second. I don't have the exact date, but it was on the ARP report transmitted for January. The okay. uh, amount was okay. In because the, both the Veterans oh. Affairs Director and the Governor's Liaison Officer for Veterans Affairs were not made aware of the transfer, nor was Mr. Nick Francisco, who was. Uh, you know, there to advocate for the bill, nor were, nor were we who have been trying to push this since May. Um, I guess that's my only question at this point. Well, do you, do you, what do you estimate the cost to be for the convention, Mr. Menno? From gathering from the first quote that we have received, um, that, what, that first quote was 40,000 uh, plus. Um, and then with the women's retreat um, is another additional 40,000 plus. Now this is just minus the, um, minus the um, supplies. But for at least for the women's uh, spouses retreat, we don't anticipate uh, too many uh, supplies for that. Uh, with the, conven the veterans convention, um, I would have to consult back with their committee as far as what, what their expenses for, for supplies. All right, so the Veter Office of Veterans Affairs testified that they were gonna do a women's uh, spouse, com a, a spouse convention. So a, a veterans convention on day one, and day two they would uh, ask the spouses, right, to come in, invite the spouses. Actually, Madam Speaker, um, the convention, the veteran convention is separate from the women's spouses retreat and the women's spouses retreat will be held at a later, at a later day. All right, and then the governor's letter, she refers to the island-wide veterans convention as well as an island-wide women's veterans convention. Is that different than the spouses? They're, they're right? calling it a spouses convention, but it's the veteran spouses retreat. So what is the island-wide women's veterans convention? Again, I think they're, they're naming it the Spouses Convention, but it's the, the title is the Women's Spouses Retreat. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have no further questions. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Senator Burnett, I, I, nothing. Senator Parkinson, any questions? If none? Yeah, actually, I do. I just want to uh, confirm with you folks, I'm looking at the uh, BBMR letter here. Uh, the general fund is currently tracking an ob unobligated FY 2024 general fund balance of $17,358,900. I just wanted to confirm that figure was correct. That's correct. All right. That's all I had. No further questions. Thank you. Senator Duenas. Mr. Baza, with the um, presentation of BBMR in this letter, is it the opinion of BBMR that there's no longer a need for a law for appropriation? Um, that's not uh, my call and if they need it or not. Um, I do know that funding was transferred in from ARP for these conventions and um, that was a call of management. So. Is there any other use that these entities could use this money for if it was transferred into their account for this sole purpose? Absolutely. If it wants to be, re if funding is appropriated from the general fund for the convention, the funding that they already received under ARP can be reprogrammed within OVA accounts 
to pursue their other needs. But what I'm saying is, is that your, is it BMR's position that we need to pass this bill in order to be able to have sufficient appropriation for the purpose that this bill calls for? Um, I'd rather defer to OVA for their needs. Um, but yes, the funding from ARP was transferred in for the convention. Okay, maybe we'll try this with Luella. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, listen, I, I don't, I'm gonna vote for this bill. My point is, is that are we going through an exercise right now that is unnecessary given the fact that these entities have been given the money in order to be able to fund what the bill is calling for? Senator, as I see it, as the bill is written, it's for the convention. Okay. And then testimony has said ARP is now going to be utilized. So for the intent of the bill, which is for the convention, it seems to be funding is already available. And another source of funding is available. So, but regarding their needs, again, if the bill is amended to support other needs. <laughs> okay. I mean, I, I'm, like I said, I'm voting for the bill. But I'm just wondering if we've got several other orders of business here in the legislature for the rest of the session. So, Mr. Chairman, are you going to opine or we'll just keep moving along? Would you opine or you, we'll keep moving along? I'm just going to stay with, I'm, I'm in support of the bill to right. begin with. And I'm, I'm going to make comments when I get on the... Got it. Okay. On the, on the Once board. again, I want to be clear. Got my vote. But if, if the funding's there and we don't need the bill, then... I mean, just for efficiency, but uh, I'll continue to listen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Senator Blas, Minority Leader. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for the panel for being here. Um, Mr. Menno, when is the convention? For I understand the conven convention. Uh, Senator, uh, it should, uh, they anticipate of taking, uh, holding the two-day convention early part of April. Early part of April. Yes, sir. And Mr. Bowser here testified that it has already been loaded into the, into the account. Correct. Okay. Um, recognizing now that there seems to be a lot of payments. Um, I received the information of, of payments that are pending um, until the a new FMIS system comes up. Is that the case with these individuals? Yeah, um, when it comes to payments, that's more of a DOA um, question, kind of out of our wheelhouse, but we're able to move funding to be available in the account, but the actual transactions of <coughs> paying out, I'm, I'm not too sure myself. Okay, I appreciate that. And is there any, Mr. Ben, I, 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 my concern here is not so much Apparently, the money is available to so, uh, ARP or excess re revenue. Pago na problema, and you know this, okay? FMIS is the, tra the, 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 the transition from AS 400 to uh, FMIS has, in fact, delayed a, lot, a number of pen, uh, payments. Because Pago na, if your convention is in April, okay? That's less than two months away. Is there any assurance from the administration, whether it be ARP, the money coming from ARP based on this letter, or money coming from excess general fund, should this, should this law or this, this legislation be passed? Are you going to get the money to be able to, I mean, granted it's in April, but I'm sure you're going to need to make some payments you know, now to be able to secure the... Is there any way that we can get the assurances from the administration that the, the money's there? Look, can the money be released? Because, again, as I stated, as I'm get, we're getting the information. There is a lot of pending payments, payments that are not, have not been processed, have not been paid out because of this transition. And I don't want us to get caught with this, holding the bag, saying that we didn't do anything. Well, I can't do anything based on what's happening at FMIS. So, you know, I mean, I, I support the bill, I support the measure. I thank the governor for using the, 
that funding source to be able to do this. My concern is, is the money going to get to you in time? Okay, so I don't know, Mr. Chair. I mean, that's, the, that's out of our wheelhouse, but knowing what happens, we're going to get blamed if the money doesn't get released. But I don't know how we're going to answer it, or that needs to be answered or be commented on or whatnot, but that's the concern that I have. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Bass. Senator Lohan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You know, this would just be reiterating what has already been asked, but I have to uh, ask again as well. Um, Mr. Mr. Baza, you said that this, uh, the money had already been transferred into the, uh, um, the account of the Veterans Affairs? Yes. Okay, and when was that, when was that done? Uh, I don't know the exact date, but it was before February 2nd. Okay, that, that being said, and the letter that we had re received regarding monies being there and therefore this, uh, <clears throat> this bill is no longer needed, would it, um, again, um, is it a guarantee then that uh, because the monies have been transferred that this will be used, uh, that the monies that are there uh, sufficient for the conventions that this money will actually be used for the convention? Is this for the ARP account? Yes. Um, as uh, it stands today, that was the intent of the use of those funds uh, without passage of this uh, 50000 from the general fund. Um, but since the funds are in their account, it could be reprogrammed for other OVA needs okay. should the general fund appropriation be made available to them. Oh. Okay. Um, so, so basically, you're saying, I mean, would you agree with the statement, the fact that this, the, <clears throat> this bill, which I absolutely support, if the bill does pass, that this will be, it's a, it's a better guarantee then that the passage of this bill and signing of the law that the Veteran Affairs will be able to get this money for the particular purpose uh, that they were asking for. I'd say they're both guarantees that it'd be used for the purpose. Okay. Either fund source. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Mr. Mano, like, likewise, would you concur with Mr. Baza in, uh, in the statements that he made as well? Oh, Senator. Gimastakilunaminagahiti <laughs> Hamzuni man honorably na senador dan senador ni po na prebest in alai. We are here. Guam Office of Veterans Affairs is in full support of this bill, mm -hmm. and we will make use, good use of mm -hmm. this uh, funding mm -hmm. for both the women's spouses retreat and the veterans convention. So how many lucky ten masiguru na na magahay desti is lapi ni ni ma prepare ni ma transfer di halo para isi account na magahay para edzu ni i para isi dos convention but conference no lo edzu ko fafay since Mr. Baza ko magahay na ten siguru ay ma process tina bill right na magahay na 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 sempi no mano para i esti i o ma prepare para i convention para isi i conference para i uh, veteranos, yeah. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, thank you very much. Mr. Senator Luhan. We're going to take a, a real short break. We're having some technical difficulties right now, so if we could just take a short recess. Thank you.